Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. I'm talking about Android threats today with Mr. Tim Armstrong, who is a malware researcher in the Global Research and Analysis team here. Tim, I'm seeing in the news every day and reading about uh, this exponential growth in uh, malicious attacks on the Android platform. Is it really exponential or is this a lot of FUD we are seeing? Uh, I, I would say it actually really is exponential. We're seeing day-to-day, uh, -day, um, you know, e even in the course of a year, we're seeing, you know, where we would discover one sample a month, uh, we, we see, you know, several samples a day. A, 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 a day, yeah. And, you know, versus Windows malware, you know, maybe not so much, but that much growth over such a short period of time, it, it becomes important to, you know, follow right. more closely. When you say malware on Android, what are you talking about? Malicious apps or, or just... Uh drive-by type uh, phishing attacks. What, when, what, what do you describe as a, how would you describe a malicious sample on? Well, it's a, it's a number of, uh, there's a number of attacks that they're, mm -hmm. they're using. There's, uh, there's root exploits um, where it actually will get, you know, give the application root access to the phone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as an administrator, you have full access to every feature of the phone. Um, so you, th you see things that will gain root access. Um, there's things that collect data about the user um, you know, things that are specific to that particular mobile device right. uh, so that it could potentially be copied um, right. for, for another criminal. You see things that collect uh, 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 geolocation information right. about the user. Um, and then, you know, there, there are phishing attacks and, right. and your standard things that have happened. Uh, but mostly, the, the most common thing is the premium rate SMS scams that, right. you know, historically have always been a part of mobile malware. Has that been kind of geographically uh, uh, the, the risk there is geographic, where it's happening mostly in Europe and, and some parts yep. of Western Europe where premium rate uh, SMS is, is, is big versus here in the U.S. What are some of the things you're seeing here in the U.S.? Well, so, yeah, in, in traditionally it's been, you know, uh, Russia, China, places that, mm -hmm. you know, where it's easy to get away with these SMS scams. But we are starting to see it filter into the U.S. now. Mm -hmm. There are new services coming out where they are, you know, they're not tied to a particular location geographically mm -hmm. so um, you know you can pull the same types of scams that you you know typically couldn't in the past you all of a sudden can pull these off in the US and we have we have started to see uh, Android malware that takes advantage of that right we're also starting to see a rise in um, uh, uh, Android applications to handle things like e-commerce uh, do you think in the f in the future as, as my mom and my dad and, and the average end user the average mom and pop end users start using Android devices uh, do you think it's going to be entirely unsafe to do an Amazon.com transaction from your Android device? Or wh where do you see it he going in, in three to five years? Uh, keeping this exponential growth in mind mm -hmm. and looking at, right now it's, it's like you said, it's kind of limited to information leakage and privacy implications, but what mm -hmm. are some of the implications for identity theft and, and some of credit card theft and things down the line? Well, it, it's interesting because, uh, you know, the most recent reports show Android being, you know, owning more than 60% of the market. Mm -hmm. And Google most recently at the I.O. conference that they had, had really pushed, you know, some of the new features they're going to offer, like the wallet, um, things to do credit card transactions. And then in the last couple of weeks, we've seen a lot of different things happening with SSL being, you know, right. becoming less trustworthy. Um, so with all these you know different factors coming into into play you know you have a majority of people that are using smart devices are using android and on the android platform a lot of the new um technology is based around mm -hmm. transactions and, you know so and and we're seeing exponential malware growth at the same time so with all these things coming together i, I can only say that it's you know in the future it's going to become less and less safe to do transactions online through your mobile device you know right assuming that other factors stay the same as and they are now. As Android, the use of Android rises, give me your top three, four, five checklist things that end users should be doing to kind of minimize your exposure to that risk. Well, number one, I would say, you know, it's to not root the device. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of vogue to do that. Most users have really no need of it. Um, you know, hobbyists and stuff sort of, well, they'll, they'll do it sometimes, but mm -hmm. um, for the average user, it just don't jailbreak it. Don't jailbreak it. It mm -hmm. becomes you know it defeats the whole security right. po you know posture of the phone. Um, beyond that, you know uh, you want to only install applications from sources that you trust. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, Android Market. Um, even though we have seen malware mm -hmm. in the Android Market, it's it's you know probably safer to get it 
from a source that you recognize mm -hmm. rather than what's called side loading where you, right. you put it on the device from some other you know, right. random location. Um, and then you know the obvious things about you know using strong passwords, using pin codes, um, mm -hmm. using you know AV software, antivirus software, um, things that can track the location of the device right. should you lose it. Things you can handle remote wiping, remote absolutely, uh, remote disable. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tim. Very useful advice for our users. And thank you for watching another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. You can check some other webcasts at youtube.com/kaspersky.